I know that I am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God. I give honor to my Father. I give honor to my Father today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We just thank him and praise him today because he's Lord and he's Lord all by himself. And I just want to give him praise and give him glory. I thank him, praise God, because he's been good to me. He's been good to me. Praise God. Welcome to the shepherd's house in the name of Jesus. Welcome, 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 welcome. Praise the Lord. We want to thank you, praise God, for being here with us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm Pastor Dr. Martiel Finney. Praise God. Welcome to all of you all that is present here today. And welcome to all of you all out there on YouTube, Internet. Praise God. However you're watching us today, welcome. Amen. We pray that the Lord will bless you where you are. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We just want to open up with prayer. Praise the Lord. And after we open up with prayer, we'll ask Brother Finney, Seymour Finney, to come and read the scriptures for us. Yes. Yes. Praise God. We're going to have uh, greetings by Brother Riker and the announcements by Sister LaDebra Todd. Praise God. And we're going to ask Adriana to come up and talk to everyone how to give on through the internet, amen, amen. through our website. Praise God. God loves a cheerful giver. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're going to open up in prayer. If you bow your hearts and your heads with me, praise God. We want to give God the glory. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you today, Lord. We adore you. Lord God, we come before you today. We ask you, Father, praise God today, Lord God, to bless us and to keep us. Hold us in the palm of your hand, O oh Lord God. Help us, O oh Lord God, to worship you today. We ask the God the Father, we ask God the Son, and we ask God the Holy Ghost to come in today, Lord God, that we praise you, that we can praise you, that we can lift you up today, Lord God, and give you the glory in our hearts, O oh Lord God. We ask you to come in and bless your service today. Bless, Lord God, everything that's done and said today, Father God. Rest the preach word, Lord God. May someone know you today. May someone hear something today, Lord God, that will stir their soul, that will stir their mind and stir their hearts, oh, Lord God, to live holy and just before you, Lord God, today. Help us, oh, Father God. We invite your presence in. We want to worship you, Lord God. We want to thank you, Lord God, for the shepherd's house. Thank you for the members. Thank you for everyone that's yes, present today. Yes, yes, yes. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. Give God a hand of praise. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. Amen. Praise God. We want to welcome, praise God, Sister Melanie Moore's uh, son-in-law. I believe it is. That's sitting. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We want to welcome you, sir. It's so good to have you. Anytime you're at this hotel, you just come on and join us. We're family. We're your family. Amen. Come on, come on. Give him a hand of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I saw Kim this morning. Praise God. And Kim is like a daughter to me. Praise God. Her and Martin. Praise God. Amen. So I've been knowing those kids all their lives just about. So I thank the Lord for them. Come on up, Brother Finney, and give us a scripture reading. Praise the Lord. God, thank God for my husband. Amen. Thank Praise you, the Lord. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Praise Lord. God. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Good morning, everyone. God blessings to each and every one of you. And opening scriptures are going to be read from Acts 9, 1 through 20. Acts 9, 1 through 20. King James Version. Nine through, I mean, one through seven reads. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that he found any who were in the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Yeah. And he said, who are you, Lord? Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, mm -hmm. whom you are persecuting. Yeah. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. Mm -hmm. So he trembling and astonished and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? 
Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who joined it with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Verses 8 through 15. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, to whom him the Lord said to, in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Hear my Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the streets called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judah for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to you, saints in Jerusalem. And there he was, in there, in here, I'm sorry, in here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. Verse 15 through 20. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house, laying his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, but the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you come, as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Verses 19 and 20. So when he had received food, he was straightened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. All right, I just want to welcome everyone to the Shepherd's House and everyone that's watching at home. Um, I, uh, we hope that this uh, service will be a great blessing to you. We pray it touches you very deeply. And we hope that you're, you're just filled with the Holy Spirit. You get a very good, deep message from this. And let's just hope for the best of this with everyone. And we, let's reach out as we go on with our everyday lives. And let's just remember to keep our eyes fixed on God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? Good morning. Good morning. And congratulations to all the graduates. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hope you're going to be here. Don't forget this next Sunday we will be having service at the Holiday Inn in Richland on G Way. And also don't forget that it will be the 4th of July weekend. So everyone be safe. And remember why we have the 4th of July and what we're celebrating our independence. And we also remember that. Our independence says, one nation under God. Amen. Let's yes. hope we follow that. Come on. Come on. That's right. Amen. Um, also Friday, we will be having our board meeting for all of our board members at 830 on Skype. And may God bless you all with the Amen. word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not used to this. Praise the Lord. Oh, That's hold up. Let me hear me. Hello, all. Hello. Okay, so we have three different ways to give. Number one, we can give in service via cash or check. 
And number two is we have actually a number, and that's why I had to go get my phone, um, to message your giving. Okay, so it's one 571 2406 and if you just text give it'll send you a link and you click on that link and you follow through with everything on how to give the third way to give is you can give on our website it's www.theshepherdshousecommunitycenter.site and over on the right hand side you can scroll down hit give and then it takes you all through those steps if anybody has any questions just message us on facebook instagram or if you know pastor's number, we can get you hooked up. Praise the Lord. The Lord it Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're not going to have testimony service today. Praise God. We're going to go into our graduation ceremony. Praise the Lord. But first, before we do that, we're going to lift our tithe and our offering. Praise God. It's so good. Praise God to be able to give unto the Lord. Praise God. You know what? A cheerful giver, God loves. He loves a cheerful giver. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I thank God. Praise God for all you all that give, pay your tithe. Praise God. You're not giving unto me. You're not giving and being obedient unto me. You're being obedient unto the Lord. First, because God demands us to give, praise God, and pay our tithe and our offering. Amen. Praise God. We love God with all our heart. Let's open up, praise God, and bless the offering with prayer. Amen. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Give unto the Lord, saints. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We just thank the Lord. Praise God for all that he's doing for us and for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We had a busy week this week. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And um, I want to thank uh, Sister Melanie Moore. Praise God for and her daughter Kim for that uh, wonderful uh, uh, yard sale. Praise Amen. God. It was very successful. Very successful. Very successful. Amen. I thank, praise God, those of you came out to help her Amen. with that yard sale. I thank all of you all as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. I haven't gotten a number yet, praise God, how much, but you can share it with me later. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. But it was very successful. Amen. She had it laid out. Her and Kim, her and Kim had it laid out. And I tell you what, it was just organized. Very structured. Amen. That lady know what, her and Kim know how to put something on. I tell you, I, I am very impressed with them. Praise the Lord. And I thank God, praise God, how they did that yard sale. I, I hadn't seen one that organized, praise God. So I thank the Lord for that. Praise God. She'll share with us, praise God. And we can share on Friday at the board how we did and what, uh, what the numbers were. We did save some stuff for uh, September yard sale. I guess last of September. Sister Ladera, are you going to sponsor that one, or what, what are we going to do? Beg your pardon? Adriana is. Okay. So we'll get with Adriana, praise God, on that September one, see what we're going to have it. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And we're there to help you, Adriana. <laughs> yeah. We are there to help you, just like we were there to help Sister Melanie. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So not without further ado, praise God, we're going to ask Sister Annie. To come on up, praise God, and her and Sister Melanie with the graduation yeah. ceremony. Praise God for our graduates. Give God a hand for our graduates. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'd like each graduate to stand up and tell us what you're going to do for uh, after, since you graduated. What's your next move? Praise God. And it goes with Caden, all of them. Praise Amen. God. We just want you all to do that. Amen. Amen. Come on up, Sister Annie, you and Sister Melanie. Amen. Praise God. Let's give it all praise, honor to my heavenly Father, Amen. to my pastor. Bless it is Lord. always a pleasure to be back into the house of the Lord once again. Amen. So at this morning, we have a special graduate, graduate celebration for all of our graduates. Amen. We don't have them out here, but we do have a person to stand on their behalf. Amen. So Amen. our first speaker going to be uh, Kata. And then yeah. our second speaker would be uh, Aiden, who is not here. And so, uh, but we will try to fill in for him as well. Amen. Then our third speaker would be Addison, who will be speaking on behalf of... Okay. 
And she's not here, but she still has someone to stand on, on her behalf. Yeah. And of course, we have a fifth speaker we have here, which is Tyler Finney. Yeah. So at this time, we gonna, uh, first, we just want to give them a hand clap because the Lord blessed them from Haiti this far. So now our first speaker would be Kayla. Come on, Kayla. All right. Praise the Lord. Which side do you want to be on? This side? Okay. So the question was, what are your goals for the next step in your life? Um, is my first one is that to um, work on hard sentences. And my reading one is um, to read third grade books and um, finish my packets. That I'm going to second grade and I'm going to make new friends and play with them and play with them. Yeah. Yeah. So, praise the Lord. And I want to do this summer is um, go in the pool and play games and do a bunch of fun stuff. And that's it. And that's it. There it is. Great job. Yeah! 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 Praise the Lord. Give him a hand, y'all. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the beautiful uh, speech. So at this time, we're going to have a Riker to stand on behalf of his sister, Vanessa. And then we're going to have our sister, Moe, on behalf of Addison, Blackburn. And then we're going to have Titus to come into his own. All right. All right. So unfortunately, my sister wasn't able to make it today. So I guess I'll be filling in her goals for her. Um, so right now, she just graduated high school. Um, she's going to do another year of tri-tech. So she can get more of an advanced education in like computers and whatnot. And then after that, she's going to get into computer programming, get a bachelor's degree in like computer programming and stuff like that. And... I believe that's all, I, that's all she has planned to do. Oh, and she's also trying to get a job right now, too. Yes, that's right. Thank you. And that's, that's her goals right now. That's her goals right now. Praise God. Praise God. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. You should be probably not, but I've heard uh, many times the phrase, one man's junk is another man's treasure. <laughs> and so I'd like to thank the flock for the yard sale recently because uh, we got thinned out quite a few things from the house, and I hope uh, some people enjoyed what they, what they yes. went home yes. with for the day. Yes. Um, so my daughter, um, who um, thank you for blessing her and thinking of her today. Uh, she's a really, really, really quiet type, very shy her whole life, and uh, when the coronavirus pandemic hit, it was her opportunity to kind of escape school and do homeschooling. And uh, believe it or not, her grades got a lot better. So, yeah. So, she's, uh, she's really into high technology. She loves her computer. I, I mean, and if the power goes out, I don't know what she would do. I really don't know. I really don't know. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, she, uh, she wants to do some programming things. Of course, you know how it's... Uh, it's a varied field, so who knows where she'll end up. But in the meantime, she's applying to be an air traffic controller, which is kind of an All interesting right, thing to do. God. So, Good yeah, night. with yeah. some blessings behind her there. And again, thanks for having me. I, I appreciate it all. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. Thank Thank you. You. Hi, uh, my name is Tyler Finney. Um, I plan on attending Western Washington University next year, and I plan on getting my degree in education. Um, and yeah. Um, oh, and I want to thank you guys and the Lord for helping me graduate through high school and all the support. I really do appreciate it. All right. <laughs> We would 
like to thank all of our speakers today. If it is a blessing, we have Ada who graduated from the uh, Red Middle School from eighth grade to ninth grade. So at this time, we're going to have each one of the representatives to come up and stand before the uh, our opponent, uh, uh, Ada, I mean, uh, Kata, and Riker, and uh, Adam Safarta Shaw, and Tyler. Okay. So we have a special presentation for each and every one for his stand of fun. Amen. Praise God. wanted to say thank you and may God bless you. May God continue to smile upon you as Amen. you continue your next journey in this life. We want to say thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, so why don't you turn to our certificate of mouth so they can take the picture. And let's get them all up with great big glad to be a part of their lives? Amen. Aren't you glad that we can pour into our young people? Yes. Praise God. This is what the church is all about. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. It ain't about programs in the church. That's right. It ain't about making money in the church. Yes. Amen. Praise God. I see a lot of churches all they get program, 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 program. I get sick of it. Give me some meat of the word. Show me how to pour into people. Show me how to help my community. Show me how to get somebody saved. You got my attention. Amen. Praise. Give God a hand of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank Sister Annie. Praise God, Robinson. Amen. Praise God. And Sister, praise God back there. Praise the Lord. Sister Moore, praise God. Melanie Moore, praise God for, praise God, putting this uh, program Amen. on. Hallelujah. Amen. And pouring into it. Praise God. So let's give them a hand of praise. At the end of service, praise God, they, ha they have refreshments back there. They have a beautiful graduation cake. They have gifts for you guys back there and Amen. punch. Praise God. So we just want to tell our graduates, amen, praise God, that we love you. We are so proud of each and every one of you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I tell you, when they get, when they, it, it, right now, you, you want to cry. I was telling this to Jim, right? I just want to cry. <laughs> Praise God. Even though we see Caden all the time, you still want to cry. Yes. Praise God. And when that one go off to go to school, I know I'm going to cry. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Amen. I've had him since he was two weeks old. 
So I know that we we gonna cry. Praise the Lord. And uh, and uh, his sister's already at the university. She's got her first year there, Tayana. And now he's going up to join her at the university. So um, pray for their safety. Amen. Pray for their safety. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Please pray for their safety. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Annie, were you done? Were you guys done? Gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We invite you into the midst. Lord, speak, Lord God, a word and anoint me, O oh Lord, with the word, Father God, through me, O oh Father God. Anoint me with your word today. Help us, Lord God Jesus, to deliver your word today, Father God. And may every heart receive. May, Lord God, our minds understand, Lord God, what the Holy Ghost is doing. Hallelujah. We need to teach and preach more on the Holy Ghost. Lord God, we just want to say thank you. Hallelujah for blessing us, Lord God Jesus, today, Lord God. Help us, O oh Father God, to see you, Lord God, and to know you, Father. Bless the shepherd's house. Bless me as, a, as the preacher and the pastor, Lord God, to deliver your word. Bless everyone here today. And bless the ones who are out on the internet and on YouTube, Lord God, listening to, to this word. May they be blessed. Lord, may someone be saved and delivered today. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We just want to say thank the Lord today. Praise God. And if you uh, wanted to know the title of this sermon today, praise God. Uh, it's called God Call a Bounty Hunter and a Murderer of Christians to Preach the Gospel. Isn't that something? A bounty hunter. You know what a bounty hunter does. You go down and hunt people down. You don't care if I bring them back. He wants the bounty money. Praise God. He bring them back dead or alive. He's a bounty hunter. That's what Paul did. He went out and hunt down Christians that believed in Jesus Christ. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Amen. He went down, he went down and hunted down men and women who believed in the gospel of Jesus. Praise God. So we need to know, praise God, who Paul was, who Saul was. His name was Saul. And then when he got saved, then his name became Paul, Apostle Paul. Praise God. You know, it's funny how God can call a hard case. He can save a hard case person. Paul was a hard case. He hunted down Christians who believed in, in Jesus Christ. Paul's problem was that he believed in the law of God. That was the problem. That doesn't sound like a problem, does it? He believed in the law of God. It's a difference. The law of God is good to have but it won't save you. I follow the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments ain't going to save me. Only one thing that I know that the Bible says that's going to save me, and it's my belief in Jesus Christ and confessing my sins to him. You can believe in the law. You can believe in uh, uh, the uh, RCW law, which is man-made law. You can believe in the Supreme Court justice law, whatever, but that's not going to save you. You can believe in the Ten Commandments. That's not going to save you. Is take Jesus Christ. And that, that, that was Paul's problem. Praise God. Brother Finney read the scripture. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to try to see if I can go over some of those scriptures. I'm going to try to preach from my text. From my text and from the scripture. I'm trying to do both. From my notes and from the scripture. If you go to Brother Finney, what Brother Finney read, we come in from Acts chapter 9. Verses 1 through 20. And I want you to go there with me. If you've got your Bibles, you got the word, you got your sword with you, it should be on your, tel on your cell phone. If you don't have a Bible with you, it should be on your cell phone. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Go to with me to Acts chapter 9. Praise God. Let's start at verse 3. We're talking about Paul here. Paul was breathing out murderous slandering things against the Christians and the disciples of the Lord. In verse 1, he said right there, verse uh, 1, he said, he went to the high priest. He asked for a letter from him so he can go to the synagogue in Damascus to murder and to slander Christians who were believing in Jesus Christ. Then when you get to verse 3, 
He wanted to bind them up and bring them to Jerusalem. And he journeyed in verse 3. He came near Damascus. That's where he got struck down with the light on Damascus Road. And suddenly a light shone in verse 3 all around him from heaven. What was the light from? That was from God, wasn't it? It had to be from God. Then he fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I want you to look at that. Why are you persecuting me? However, Paul was not always a, he wasn't a Christian here. He wasn't a Christian at this time. Before he met the Lord, Paul was known as Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus was zealous, a zealous Jew. Saul of Tarsus hated the name of Jesus Christ. Saul of Tarsus hated the gospel. Saul of Tarsus hated the doctrine of the resurrection. He didn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Saul of Tarsus hated the church. Saul of Tarsus was a murderer, bounty hunter of Christians. He killed many of them. He was there when Stephen got killed. Praise God. He was a lost man. He was going to hell because he did not believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I wonder how many people in the early church believed that Saul could even be saved. I thought that. I said, how in the world God can use this man and kill all these men and women of God? He killed men and women of, of the gospel. I wondered that when I first got saved and when I first read this story. How in the world can you use somebody like this? And as I read this story, saints of God, you see yourself in it. I might not have physically killed, but I'll slanderly kill. You kill somebody with your tongue. Praise God, talking about them, demonizing them, demonizing their character. We're not supposed to do that as Christians of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you think anyone in the early church loves Saul? Hmm. I don't think so. Do you think anyone in the early church ever called Saul's name out in prayer? Don't know. Don't know. Do you think anyone in the early church held on to the hope that Saul could be saved? I got loved ones that I feel like that sometimes, but God said don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. You keep praying for loved ones who pray those hard cases, praise God, those rebellious cases. You keep praying for them that God will save them. I would imagine that most of them saw him as a man to be feared. I'm sure they did because he killed Christians. They could see or hear coming, and I'm sure they would shun or hide, praise God, from him. Most likely, most of them believe that he would be saved. Praise God. If this man's story teaches us anything, it teaches us that there is hope for everyone. There's hope for the ones who you don't think, praise God. You've been praying for that person, somebody, you have been praying for that person for a long time to be saved. Praise God. Don't give up. Saul's story teaches us that there's hope for the hard cases here. There's hope for your loved ones. There's hope for your friends. There's hope for your coworkers. There's hope for people who have prayed for over all of these years and have not been saved. There's still hope for them. Do not give up. Some of you have been praying for certain people for years. Don't give up. Some may have to come to believe that there are hard cases for whom there's no hope. Don't give up. You may become tempted to stop praying for some of these people. Don't give up. Keep praying. Keep praying for them. You might reach a place of discouragement. I know I had. Praise God. Hallelujah. Doubting. Praise God. But God said, persevere in your prayer. Keep praying for them. Know that I hear your prayer. Know that I hear you when you call. Before you even call and pray to me, God say, I have heard your prayer. I said, oh, God, thank you. I needed that assurance from the Lord. I needed God to tell me that. Praise God. Saul's story reminds us that God loves sinners. It reminds me that it is never too late for a sinner to come to Christ. It reminds us that as long as there is life, there is hope. Praise God. Hallelujah. It reminds me that God of the Bible is a God of grace, love, and mercy, and that he will save anyone who will call on him by faith. I really do believe that because I'm a living witness that he saved me. Praise God. Hallelujah. It reminds me even when we think nothing is happening, 
God is always working to bring the lost to the faith of Jesus Christ. Praise God. The problem with Saul was he was self-righteous. That's what a lot of us' problem was, wasn't it? Self-righteous. We didn't read the Bible. We guess on stuff. Then we misquote it, praise God. So we don't go and study it in depth word like we should. So I'll know Christ. More, the more I read the Bible, the closer I get to him. Did you know that? I know the word, the closer I get home. And heaven is my, on my, on my travel road. That's my aim, is to make heaven my home. Saul of Tarsus was a very religious man. A lot of us was when we, before we got saved. We thought we knew the word. We thought we knew God. Praise God. Hallelujah. He detailed his religion achievement. You see that in Philippians 3, 4 through 6. You see it also in Acts 26 and 5. Praise God. Saul lived a clean life as far as the law of God was concerned. He lived a clean life. He followed the law to the letter. He followed the law to the T. But he wasn't saved. Why wasn't he saved? He wasn't following Jesus. You cannot be saved under the law. You have to accept Jesus Christ. Confess your sins to him, the Bible says. Corinthians, I think Corinthians 9 and 10, praise God, tells us that. We need to confess our sin. And he's just and he's faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Saul hadn't got to this point yet. Praise God. Hallelujah. He had to have an experience. And I'm going to tell you about that experience in a minute. Saul lived a clean life as far as the law. He lived a blameless life as far as the law was concerned. As much as humanly possible, Saul of Tarsus kept the law of God. He loved the law. He studied the law. He obeyed the law. He lived the law. Uh, uh, Paul was uh, smarter as, smart as a PhD three times over. He was just that smart. He was very small. Short. You wouldn't think, he, you would think that he's tall in stature. He was short and he's bald in the top. He's smart. Praise God. Hallelujah. The problem with Saul's relationship with the law was the fact that he was trusting his obedience to the law to save his soul. Get it? He was trusting his obedience, his obedience to the law to save his soul. So, you know what? You live in for favor with God. You do that. You live in for favor. God don't want you to live for favor. He wants you to live for Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. He was trusting his obedience in the law to save his soul. Saul believed keeping the law would buy favor with God and that God would accept him and grant him salvation because of he had earned it. You cannot earn God's favor. You cannot earn favor with God, saints of God. The problem with Saul thinking is that he is dead wrong here. You cannot earn salvation. You can't. You got to confess it to Jesus Christ and believe on him. Amen. Most people in our world have the same idea. Most religions built on the same faulty thinking. And the reason I'm preaching on this today, because I'm doing preaching, teaching today. Preaching, teaching. That's what we need. Preaching, teaching. Hallelujah. I don't want somebody up at the pulpit yelling at me all the time. I want somebody that's going to teach me what God's word is saying to me. So my soul can receive, praise God, what God's word is for me. So I can make heaven my home one day. When my soul receives it, praise God, it's there. It's there. It's locked in, praise God, because the Holy Ghost seals it in there. So I want somebody that's going to pre preach and teach me the word of God. The truth is no one is saved by religious works. And I'm, you find that in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Praise God. According to Romans 3 and 20, no one is saved by keeping the law. Paul was wrong. According to Titus 3 and 5, no one is saved by good deeds. You cannot do good deeds. I'm going to take Sister Mary a cake because she's been sick and I'll make her, make her some soup because she's been sick. I'm going to go over and help Adriana and them move because they need help. You think that's going to earn me favor with God? No. No, your good deeds cannot earn you favor with God, no matter what you do. It's scripture. I just gave it to you. No good deed, Titus 3 and 5. Read it. Amen. Praise God. 
Anyone who's basing their salvation on hope in heaven and doing good deeds or perfectly keeping the law of God is deceiving themselves. Why? No one can keep the law, according to James 2 and 10. Did you know that? Nobody can keep the law, perfectly keep the law, according to James 2 and 10. You can't do it. I can't perfectly keep the Ten Commandments. Praise God. I have, you know, and, and since I've been saved, tired and filled with the Holy Ghost, I didn't sin. But I got an advocate with the Father. That when I sin, I can go before the throne, boldly go before the throne and ask for forgiveness. Come on, saints of God. We all in sin since we've been saved. Don't look at me. We've done something. Somebody cut me off in traffic. I think wrong, and I want to chew them out. That's a sin there. Shouldn't get mad. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Why does God demand? What does God demand from us? He demands absolute perfect. One sin is enough to send you to hell. One sin is enough to send you to hell. In fact, you don't even have to sin to be guilty before the Lord. Did you know that? Oh, my, my God. I can hear people out there saying, what do you mean? I'm going to tell you what I mean. You don't have to sin to be guilty before the Lord. You know why? The Bible says you were born in sin. When Adam sinned, we inherited. It came down upon us. When Adam sinned, the first Adam sinned, it came down upon us. Praise God. The Bible tells us that. Praise God. Adam sinned. When Adam sinned, his guilt was inherited by all of his descendants. That's us. Why don't we become sinners when we sin? We sin because we are sinners. We sin because we are sinners. Keeping the law does not change the fact that everyone who enters this world is a sinner by birth and is condemned before they ever do anything right or wrong, according to Romans 3. Read it. Romans 3, 10 through 15 to 23. Romans 6, 23. Romans 5 and 12 tells us that we're born into sin. While you was yet, the Bible says, while you yet was in your mother's womb, I knew you. You know what he's saying? I knew you was going to sin when you, before you was even born. And I knew I had to deliver you before you were even born. I know you were going to come to me and confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior before you were even born. That's what he's telling us in that scripture. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our world is filled with self-righteous people. Shame on us. Saul was another problem with Saul. Saul was sinfulness. Saul's sinfulness was a problem for him. Saul of Tarsus would have said that he was a holy, righteous man. He was not. In truth, Saul of Tarsus was a lost sinner who needed a savior. He didn't realize it, but it was guilt. He was guilty of breaking the number of God's commandments. He was guilty. Saul was guilty of violating the sixth commandment, which says this, thou shalt not kill. He killed more Christians than y'all even want to know. And he went to the people's houses. He killed women and men. He would wipe out families. Praise God. Hallelujah. He was guilty of the sixth commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Exodus 20 and 13 tells us that. And Leviticus 19 and 18 which says, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord that speaketh these words. Saul of, uh, Saul of Tarsus thought that he was right with God. He believed that his self-righteousness and his outward obedience to the law of God was enough to please God and make it into heaven. I'm telling you, if God hadn't knocked him down off of that mount on Damascus Road, Saul would be in hell today. Saul's problem is shared by everyone in this world. Self-righteousness. We can never be good enough to please God. We can never earn his favor, saints of God. The only way our sins can be forgiven is that we can be saved as far as to turn to Jesus Christ and to believe the gospel. Acts 16 and 31, and when we do, we will be saved of our sins and we'll be forgiven and we will be made right with God. This takes the place of our works right here. Jesus Christ, amen, praise God in his grace. Saul, without redemption, always produces resentment. 
We got to be redeemed, saints of God. We have to be redeemed. And the only way that we can be redeemed is through Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God. I'm going to preach on the blood. Praise God. Hallelujah. Maybe next week. I, I'm working on that sermon, so pray for me. We're going to preach on the blood. But this is all preached on the Holy Ghost. Last week was preached about the Holy Ghost. This week is preached about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, praise God, was very active here in this story. Amen. Very active in this story. Let me share something with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Paul heard and he rejected the truth. He heard the gospel and he wanted no part of it. He refused to believe on Jesus and he became enraged against those who did believe in Jesus. The sin in Saul's heart made him ruthless and a cruel man. And I'm telling you, people that don't believe in Jesus Christ are cruel and they can be ruthless. They can obey the law and make some people think, oh, they're so good. They're so obedient to God. Oh, he, they're so obedient to God's law, to God's word. They ain't saved. I used to think that. I used to think that. I knew a lot of people preach on the Ten Commandments and, and, and declare they were saved. But when I started reading the word for myself and knowing God for who he is and knowing how only the way that I could come to Christ was through Jesus Christ and confessing my sins to him and believing on the blood and the resurrected Christ, I wasn't going anywhere. I had to believe that. I had to confess my sins to the Lord. Saul of Tarsus hated Jesus and the gospel. He did all he could to destroy the name of Christ and people that believed in the name of Christ, Pre people that were preaching in the name of Christ. He destroyed churches. If he was living today and still the same old Saul, praise God, he would try to come in here and kill this church and destroy us because we live and preach Jesus Christ in this church. And we believe in the resurrection and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We believe in the Trinity. Amen. He was against all of that. He was against all of that. Because Saul of Tarsus hated Christ and the gospel, he did all he could to destroy all the people of God. Notice this. Now, I want you to notice this. Notice what Saul, no, notice what Saul did. I'm going to bring some facts to you in case if you can't remember about this story. In Acts 7, 58, he participated in the stoning of Stephen. I'm giving you some dirty acts, some sinful acts that he did. If you thought he was a good man, I'm finna tell you. He participated in the stoning of Stephen. Acts 8 and 1, Saul was consenting to the death of Stephen. He agreed with the murder and the killing of him. In Acts 8 and 3, Saul made havoc. Acts 8 and 3, Saul made havoc of the church. He ruined and devastated churches. He would go in and kill those people in there that's teaching the word of God. Acts 8 and 3, Saul entered into private dwellings and other homes, businesses, and took believers into custody, dragging them out and slaughtering them. He did this. Acts 9 and 1, Saul openly and threatened believers. And Saul murdered believers. Acts 9, 1 through 2, Saul obtained warrants. He went to the law and got warrants from the Jewish authorities, authorizing him to go in and harass and harass Christians. Acts 26 and 9, Saul did everything he could to oppose the name of Christ. When you're opposing people that's giving you the word, you are in bad shape. When you're imposing the word of God, you're not rejecting that person. You know who you're rejecting? You're rejecting God. When somebody give you the word and tell you, thus said the Lord about your life and what you're doing, you're not rejecting that person. You're rejecting God because God has sent that word through that person to give to you. It's all about God. It's all about Jesus. Ain't about us no more. He testified against believers and facilitated their murders. In Acts 26 and 10. Acts 26 and 11, Saul forced believers to blaspheme the Lord who saved them. Keep that thought right there. 1 Timothy 1 and 12, by his own testimony, Saul was a blasphemer who slandered God. 
He was a persecutor who troubled and harassed others. He was an injurious man who speak and act harshly toward others. He was an unbeliever in Jesus Christ. Now notice I said that he caused people to blaspheme the Lord. And the Bible also says that Paul blasphemed in Acts 26 and 11, the Lord. Then somebody said, well, Sister Finney, I thought blaspheming, you, don't, you can't get saved when you blaspheme. Notice I said he blasphemed the Lord. The Bible says if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, there's no coming back. He didn't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Come on, saints. We got to teach it right. That's why teacher preaching, teacher preaching today. We need to know there's a difference. If I had blasphemed the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't be standing here today. The Bible says if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, there's no coming back. There's no forgiveness. He blasphemed the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm, teacher preaching. I like that. Saul was a man who murdered. Praise God. And he was much feared. Praise God. Some of you praying. Some of you are praying for people who, like, who are like Saul today. They might be rank sinners. Rank sinners think they know it all. You can't tell them nothing. Praise God. They just rank. They might be people who are outwardly good. They might be people trusting in good works. They might be people trusting in a profession that they might make some point, praise God, in the past. Praise God, sound good. Sound good, praise God. But Saul, praise God, the power of Saul's, the power of Saul's God, listen to this. Saul of Tarsus was in a place where the people of reach him. I want you to look at this. He was a death to the he was deaf to their pleas. Some people are deaf to your word when you go forth and when you tell them about God. They think they know it all. They've arrived. You can't tell them anything. Yes, yes. He was deaf to the gospel. He was blind to the truth. He stared, he was staring him right in the face. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. But listen to this, Father. The man could not reach Saul. God knew exactly where to find Saul. He knew exactly where to find him. I'm going to go back to the scripture. He journeyed to Damascus. And suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I'm finna blow your world. And I tell you this. Those of you out there on YouTube, internet, those of you are sitting here. Tells me something. It gave me hope. It gave me strength. It gave me peace. It gave me endurance. This verse right here. He journeyed and he came to Damascus. And suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, You persecuting me. I about me let me share something with you it's hard to kick against the prick because i am a child of god and you will be pricked by lying on me you will be pricked by telling stories that aren't true about me you will be dealt with and i won't have to even touch you Hallelujah. i won't have to touch you it's hard to kick against the prick it's hard to kick against the prick it's hard to kick against the prick god is the ox he's the prick because by you Adriana, is somebody messing with you? Is somebody messing with you and treating you harm and doing you and your husband and your family harm? Let me tell you something. By you being a servant of the Most High God, by you believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, praise God, by you being under the Holy Ghost protection, you are a prick. You are the ox God. It's hard, praise God, for them to tear you down. It's hard, praise God, for them to bust you up and spit you up. It's hard for somebody to make you look low and look like you, praise God, is the villain. Can't do it. It's hard to do. It's hard to kick against the prick. Praise God. Have you ever seen a prick? Let me share something with you. Back in that day, the prick was a long thing and it had iron on the end of it, pointed iron. So just assume that this is a prick. Who going to do this to it real hard? Who going to come up and do this real hard to this? Anybody? And do I have any volunteers? 
come up with your hand and hit this thing as hard as you can with your hand. If I had a blade up here, you gonna come up and hit your hand with the blade? It's hard to kick against the prick. You're gonna be stuck. You're gonna be hurt. You're gonna be stabbed. That's what God was telling Saul here. Saul, why are you persecuting me? Don't you know it's hard to kick against the prick? I'm the prick. I'm the ox go. Praise God. You can't tear me down. I will hurt you every time you try to kick against me. Every time you try to do something, I'm going to prick your heart. Every time you try to hurt me, praise God, I'm going I'm 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 to show you what hurt is. I like what he said when he said that. Why are you persecuting me? He let Saul know what he was doing. Wrong. Verse 5, he said, who are you, Lord? I like that. He didn't say, who are you? He had recognized him by then. He had recognized that he was dealing with the Lord. Who are you, Lord? Come on, I'm, I'm teaching preaching. Teaching preaching today. Then he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the prick, the goad. I am Jesus. Hallelujah. I am Jesus. You know what he's saying? All the people that you have killed, all the people that believed in me, praise God, you persecuted me. Everybody that you talked about, everybody that you done wrong, everybody that you killed, every home that you went and invaded, you have done it to me. Hallelujah. Saints, we better be careful. We better be careful. We better be careful. Praise God. Because when you kick against the prick, when you kick against a child of God, a woman, a man of God, praise God. Let me tell you something. You're going up against a mighty God, and you will be dealt with. Saul was dealt with here. I like what the Bible says. He said in verse 6, and so he trembled and astonished and said, Lord, he recognized him again. He called him Lord. He knew who was talking to him. Lord. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? That's what we ought to be saying when God find, when we when we've been found out. This is what we Lord. How do you want me and help me to correct myself? Help me to do better. Lord, what it is you want me to do to turn this thing around in my life, in my family, my marriage, my home? What you want me to do? In verse 7, when the men, verse no, verse, uh, yeah, verse 6. So he trembled and stunned and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said unto him, he gave him a command, arise, get up, in other words, and go into the city, and you will be told what to do. Verse 7, and the men who journeyed with him, I love this, and the men who was there with Saul stood speechless. They heard the voice, but couldn't see no man. They heard the voice, but couldn't see no man. Let me tell you something. That direction, those instructions, and that particular moment was for Saul. Saul saw, and he heard. These men only heard, but they did not see. See, sometimes, praise God, we blind to what God is trying to tell us and what we, try, what we need to see. We need to ask God for instruction. Saul asked him, for instruction. What must I do? So God gave him sight to see the instructions that he was getting ready to give him. Look at verse 8. Then Saul arose from the ground and when his eyes were opened he saw no one. He got knocked off of his mount. Whatever he was riding a horse, donkey, cow, camel, I don't know what, but he got knocked to the ground off of that mount. He arose from the ground and when his eyes were opened he saw no one. He was on his road to Damascus to kill and to murder Christians. He had gotten a letter, praise God, from the priest to do so, from the high priest. Verse 8, he arose from the ground. His eyes were open. He saw no one. He was blind. See, sometimes God has to blind us before we can see. Sometimes he has to blind us before we can really see what it is that he wants us to do. But they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. Verse 9, and he was there three days without sight. 
He could not see. He didn't eat or drink anything for three days. And I tell you, I don't know if y'all ever been there. When God trying to deal with you and trying to show you something, you, you just don't have the appetite. You, 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 you want to get into the word. You, you want to pray. You want to get off to yourself so you can hear God clearly. And that's what I do. I want to hear God clearly what he's saying. And then I get an urge and an unction to smelling. The Holy Ghost is raised up in me, speak in tongues. Hallelujah. When I speak in tongues, I, I see things I can't see in the natural. I say things that I can't say in the natural, and I can't even utter them out of my mouth when I speak in tongues. And then God give me the understanding of them. I mean, the Holy Ghost will come in there like a strong storm. He'll, he'll switch through your body like lightning. He'll come through your mind, and I tell you what, when the Holy Ghost get a hold of your tongue, my tongue thickens. Mine thickens. But when the Holy Ghost get a hold of my tongue, oh, glory to God, hallelujah, I get a vision. I get enlightened. I get enlightened. Sister, I get enlightened. God has shown me, praise God, people talking about me. I can hear their voices and they way away. I can hear them sitting up. I hear their voices. Know who they are. He let me recognize the voice. I can't do that in the natural. It's a dangerous thing to mess with a child of God. Dangerous thing to mess with a child of God. Listen to this. Listen to this in this story. In verse 11, no, in verse 10, now there was a certain disciple named, uh, a disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in, in a vision, Ananias, oh God, talking to Ananias now. See, this, th th this is where it's dangerous to, to mess with a child of God when God's trying to give you something. Ananias, he said, here I am, Lord. Verse 11, so the Lord said to Ananias, arise, go to the Street called Straight Street. How fitting it is for God to send this man down the Straight Street. Because he needed to be straightened out. Both of them needed to be straightened out. Paul needed to be straightened out. Ananias needed to be straightened out. Well, Pastor Finney, why you say Ananias needed to be straightened out? He's a man of God. I'm going to tell you why Ananias needed to be straightened out. He arrived, go to Straight Street, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. This is why Ananias needs to be straightened out too. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in. This is God telling Ananias. Ananias has seen a man in a vision. I've given him the vision. See, the Holy Ghost can give you a vision. I've given him a vision coming, that you're coming in and putting your hands on him so that he might receive his sight. Verse 13. Then Ananias, this is why Ananias had to be straightened out in verse 13. Ananias answered the Lord and told the Lord, tried to tell the Lord how to do his business. He said, Ananias answered and said, Lord, I've heard about this man from many people. He's done much harm and has done your saints in Jerusalem. He's killed them. Ananias getting into God's business now. Like God don't know that this man has murdered Christians. Like God don't know that he has messed with folks and families and killed them. See, it's a dangerous thing, praise God, to mess with God's business. Now you're trying to tell God how to do his business, Ananias. See, he dealt with Ananias here too. He wasn't just dealing with Paul. He's dealing with the Christian folks too who think they know it all. We got to be careful. You ain't got no advice from the Lord. Don't give nobody advice. If you ain't heard the Holy Ghost speak to you to tell somebody something, don't shut your mouth. Hmm. Verse 14, and here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. He, he messing with God's business. This man and bind everybody who call on your name, Lord. So why are you sending me down there to pray for him, to pray his sight back? Mind your own business, Ananias. Verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, I like how God dealt with him, Ananias. But the Lord said unto him, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles 
before the kings, before the children of Israel. For Ananias, in verse 16, for I will show, God will show, I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. You mind your own business. He going to suffer for my name's sake. Aren't we all suffering for Jesus Christ's name's sake? Aren't they trying to persecute the Christians today to try because we're preaching the gospel? Because people don't want to hear, praise God, hallelujah, about their sin. People don't want to hear, praise God, laws are agreeing with folks' sin. And laws are coming along and, and just trying to make up laws to, 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 to pacify people's sin, praise God. This is what God was dealing with here. For I will show him many things that he must suffer for my name's sake. Verse 17, and Adonis went his way. You stop minding the Lord's business then when God told him off. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, laying his hands on him. He said, brother, look, look, look what he called him now. He was accusatory. He was saying, now this man is slandered and killed. He didn't kill many Christians. And look, look at 17. What, he call, what is he calling Saul now? Brother Saul. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight. And fill with the Holy Ghost. Saints of God, God can fill you on the, your Damascus road. While you persecuting somebody else, while you lying to somebody or lying on somebody and, and persecuting somebody and doing sin, God can fill you right then and there. He can knock you off your mount. He can knock you on, 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 off on Damascus Road when you're on your way to lie on somebody, when you're on your way to persecute others, when you're on your way to murder and to kill. God can knock you off your mount and take away your sight. He took away sinful sight. That's what I said. Because the Bible said, praise God, when he got his sight back, it fell off like scales. Like scales. Like scales. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. And he received his sight at once. And he arose and he was baptized. Saints of God, I want to share with you today, God is speaking to the church today. Be careful, church. Be careful, praise God, who and what we're saying to others. Always be ready with the word of God. Giving man a, a hope and the faith and the trust that you believe in. Always try to encourage others. Don't try to put nobody down. Always try to encourage others. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you feel a warning from the Lord, if you feel an unctioning from the Holy Spirit to tell somebody something, again, that's what we're doing. Put and then you walk away. You give them the warning from God and then you walk. You don't stand there and try to argue with him. Because God can knock them off their mount. God knows how to do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We need to do that. God, how God, how did God confront him? With a bright light. He shined on him. Throw it into the ground. God can throw you to the ground and give you a word. Praise God. Hallelujah. How God convicted him. When the Lord spake to Saul, he said, it's hard to kick against the prick. That's how he convicted him. Hard to the prick. Hard, Saul. That, that'll convince me right there. Praise God. When you're trying to go against God, it is a dangerous thing. Praise God. Am I closing? He had turned a deaf ear to the gospel here. He had closed his eyes and his heart to truth. But God had to knock him off the mount. God had to meet him on the road to Damascus. He had to send him down on straight street. Oh, I love that. Straight street. God going to have to send a lot of us on straight street. A lot of us need to be sent on straight street. You know what? There's no safe. There's nobody, praise God. We need to keep hoping. We need to keep reading the word. Praise God. Re renew your promises. Renew God's promises daily. It's your daily bread. It's your daily feeding time. It's your daily thirst time. Read the word. Praise God. Uh, quench on God's word. Quench on God's word. Feast on God's word. We got all of us got loved ones that need to be saved. All of us got somebody. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. That God, praise God, ain't reached yet. But he's going to. 
because God specializes in prodigal sons, prodigal daughters, and God specializes in the hard cases. Paul was a hard case. He was a hard case. You need to realize it, praise God. In my closing, praise the Lord. I, I tell you, I couldn't even get through all of this. Proven by the word of God, as soon as Saul gets saved, he begins to serve the Lord by preaching the gospel in verse 20. Throughout his ministry, Saul was later become Paul. Used every platform he was given as an opportunity to tell the world about Jesus Christ. He wasn't talking the law no more. He told governors and kings and soldiers and common men and women about Jesus Christ. He told them, praise God again and saved him, saved them. He told them about the love, grace, and mercy of God. He told them everything that he could about the God he came to know through Jesus Christ. He told it verbally and he told it in writing. This murderer of Christians, I'm about to shock some of you. This murderer, Saul, who is now Apostle Paul, this murderer of Christians and family and men and women, God used this hard case man to write two thirds of the New Testament, the, the Bible that you're reading. Tell me God, praise God, can't do it. Two thirds of the Bible you're reading in the New Testament, Paul wrote. Over 13 epistles, he wrote them. He had experienced something. He had to do something in order to write like that. And wrote, and have you ever wrote the New Testament? He had to experience something. Paul went through shipwrecks. He went through a, a many times they tried to kill him. Snake wrapped around his hand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tried to bite him. Vipers. He went through storms. Many storms. Praise God. Hallelujah. The gospel he used hate became the thing that he loved to talk about. I love that. The very Lord he tried to destroy became the Lord he could not talk enough about. His word proved that reality, he had faith. God saved sinner. He produced the very name. John 3 and 3 tells us that. He makes them, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us he makes us new creatures. He gives them a new heart. Ezekiel 36 and 26 says that. Praise God. God gave all of this to Paul. Keep this in mind as I close. Do you have any hard cases in your heart today? If you're listening to me out there on YouTube and Internet, if you got someone in your family that's a hard case, God can do it. God can do it. God can save them. God can save them and turn them around. You got a hard case, a child or grandchild or nephew or grandson, praise God, hallelujah, God can turn that hard case around. Do you ever feel like giving up on them? Yeah, we do. We do. But we can't do it. We need to just keep praying. Keep praying for them. That's all you can do. We can't turn up our knees and spank them anymore. And keep praying. God can do the spanking. God can do the spanking. Do you ever wonder if there's any point of praying for them on and on and on and on? Yes! Why should I keep praying? I, you know, I wonder sometimes, have they been turned over to a reprobate mind? I thought that about Paul when I first read the story. Is there coming back from a reprobate mind? Yes. Ain't nothing impossible with God. Ain't nothing impossible with God. Even if they've been turned over to a reprobate mind, God can go get that reprobate mind if he desires to do so. Do you know you, when you when you first born, do you know God knew if you was going to get saved? Do you know? I'll go one further. Did you know when you were born, God knew if you were going to get saved? I'll go one further. Did you know when you were born, God knew that you was going to get saved, backslide, get saved again, backslide, get saved again? Do you know that he knew that? Praise God. Did he know? Did you know in the end, praise God, of your life, God knew if you was going to trust in him, believe in him and confess him so you can go to heaven? God got everybody's number. He knows how many is coming to heaven and how many is going to hell. In my closing, let me encourage you to keep praying for your loved ones, your soul. Keep praying for your soul. God may use, praise God, your soul, praise God, hallelujah, to write something fantastic, to save many people, to plant and start Keep praying for your soul or your soulettes. In other words, the women. 
praise God, that you're praying for. Keep living right before the Lord. Keep telling them about Jesus. Keep telling them about Jesus. They don't want to hear it. I know they don't. I know that my grandchildren don't want to hear it. They think I'm old fogey. Praise God. I kept my children in church. And I'm going to tell you, they would fake it. They would lie and say, oh, feel good. Oh, mama, mom, mama, I'm hurting. I can't go to church today. I said, come on, baby, don't go to church and take the photo altar. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Take your photo altar. We'll be all right. Well, let's take a little bit of pepto bismol before we go. I want that, mama. I want that. I said, well, let's go to the altar in church. That'll show enough fix you. You, 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 you got to be, um, you got to be the parent. I see so many parents be friends with their kids. They want to be buddies with their kids and their grandkids. Buddies. You know what I tell my big old grown boys? And they, they up here. I got one that's way up there. Y'all seen it. I look right in their face. I say, I'm the mama. <laughs> and I say, you need to go to church. You know, you have to, I, I, and I tell them, I'm your mama. I ain't your buddy. I ain't your buddy. I tell my kids that. I said, because I'm always going to be mama, and I'm always going to give you the word of God. You might not like me, but you love me. Because I'm mama. I would lie to you and compromise with you and, and pacify you and not tell you the truth. Then I'm not being a good mother. You ain't supposed to tell you what said the Lord about your sin. You, did you know that? I didn't like my mama what she told me. I dare not say anything because I knew I, my teeth would be on the floor. But I didn't like it when she was telling me about my sin. Praise God, when I was a teenager coming up, I didn't want to hear that, the old fogies. They're sitting up there, old fogies. Old, old, old fogies. Y'all know what I want to say, but old fogies. Praise the Lord. I said, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's in the olden day. That's back in the olden day. But you know what? I was wrong. I apologize to God and before man. Because the Bible said the word, God said, I change not. Whether they were old fogies or not, the word still stand, don't it, sister? It still stand. It's still righteous. It's still holy. I was wrong. And I stand before God and all of y'all and say that I was wrong. I wish my mother was here to hear it, but I think, I think somehow she knows. One thing I want to share with you before I close. Who knows what God is doing in their life right now? You don't know. God might be causing a circumstance in the very people that you are praying for. Listen to this. Hear this. The very people that you are praying for, that's the case, that don't seem like they're going to get saved. The very person that you're praying for, by your prayers and keep praying, God is setting up a standard. Hear, hear this and hear this well. God is causing circumstances to come into their life. Some hardships that's going to come into their life. Some disturbances that's going to come into their life. That's going to help them turn back to God. Did you hear that prophetic word? Did you hear that prophetic word? He did it to me. I mean, I went through, oh, I, it was, what, nine of us all together? Maybe two of us left? I went through something to get salvation. Lost my mama, lost my daddy. Praise God. And I lost, what, five or six siblings going on before me. Praise God. Maybe two of us left. Two of, two of, yeah, two of us left. My brother and I. God allowed me to go through circumstances to get me to realize that he's calling me to ministry. I was a hard case because I loved a joke. That, that was my problem. I love the juke. Y'all know what juking is. Some, don't y'all? Some of y'all know what juking. You go to the juke joint, you dance, <laughs> have fun. I love that. Nightclub, and some of you might call it, but back in the South, we called it juking. Praise God. We loved it. We loved it. Praise God. I changed my dance partners. I dance with the Holy Ghost now. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I thank. Oh, glory to God. I thank Him because He called me. Praise God. But God is setting up a standard. He's causing circumstances to come into that hard case person that you're praying for, their life. He's causing some concerns to come before them that they're going to have to 
pray about. They're going to have to seek advice on. They're going to have to probably seek you out. Hallelujah. That's going to cause them to make a turnaround. It's going to cause them to fall off their mount. Them circumstances are going to cause them to fall off their mount and see the light. Hallelujah. God is setting up a standard to save those people. Keep praying for them. Don't give up. God's working behind the scene. You can't see it. We can't always see what God is doing. But God is working behind the scene. You got saved. We got our testimony, don't we? They got to get theirs. They got to get their testimony too. Bow your hearts and your heads with me. Praise God. Hallelujah. If there's anyone here today that need God, anyone here today that need, praise God, salvation. If you're not saved, praise God, we want to pray with you. Praise God. If you haven't given your heart to the Lord and confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you out there on YouTube and Internet, praise God. If there's anyone out there have not confessed your sins before the Lord, you can do it right now before we close out this service. Right there where you at, in your chair, in your living room, wherever you at watching this, you can give your heart to the Lord right now. God wants to save you. You can do it right now. If you know God is confronting you about salvation, praise God, we're here to pray with you. Praise God. Get a hold of us. Praise God on the Internet. Father God, we love you, Lord God, as we do this altar call. We pray that somebody has heard this message about this murderer of Christians, this hard case that didn't seem like he was going to get saved and turn his heart around. We know, dear Lord God, you got a Damascus road for all of us to travel and to see the light and get knocked off of our mount so we can see the light. Hallelujah. We know that you got a word, Lord, a piercing word for all of us to get saved and make our lives, Lord God, holy and acceptable before you. Father, we know that we can't live off the law of God and expect, Lord God, you to give us favor. We must live off and confess Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior, Father God, so we can get saved and go to heaven. You don't live and we can't earn your favor, Lord God. We can't earn your mercy and your grace, but we must confess your son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior, Lord God, for us to see, receive mercy and grace. There are hard cases in our families. And Lord, and I know, dear God, Jesus, you can reach them. I know, dear God, Jesus, you will reach them. Lord God, they will confess you one day as Lord and Savior. Your words say every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As Lord. Hallelujah. We know one day they will confess. And Lord, and I pray that it's sooner than later. I pray, Lord God, that you will come and visit them in the night, in the wee hours of the night in the early hours of the morning, on their jobs, Lord God. Speak to them in the noonday, Lord God. Speak to them, Lord God, hallelujah, wherever they at. Speak to our children. Speak to our grandchildren. Save them, Lord God. Speak to all of our loved ones, Lord God. Let them see the light. Shine the light on them, Lord God. Send them down Damas on, on their Damascus road, that they will see the light of Jesus Christ. That, Lord, you will shine a light, Lord God, on them. And, Lord, speak a word to our children. Speak a word to our loved ones. Let them know that it's hard to kick against the prick of God. Let them know that it's hard to kick against the prick. They cannot kick against the ox goad because you will prick them. Let them know, dear God, they got to surrender all. They got to surrender all. Let them know, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the word of God. We thank you, Lord God, for all our visitors, all of the graduates. I pronounce blessings on every graduate, Lord God Jesus. I pronounce your grace, your blessings upon them. Lord, keep them, Lord God. Watch over them. Lord God, help them, Lord God, to get their education, Lord God. Help them to go to the next grade, the next level, Lord God, of education. Lord God, help them to pursue you. Help them to pursue Christ. Lord, that's the main thing. Help them to pursue you, Father God, and look to the author and the finisher of their faith. We ask you, Lord, to bless the shepherd's house. Bless everyone that's present today. Bless the one that's watching by YouTube, praise God, or Internet, praise God. Bless all of us. Help us, oh, Lord God, to trust you in the day that we're living in. We live in, Lord God, in the evil day, evil times going on. But, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to protect every, Lord God, Jesus, that is listening. And, Lord, I also ask a special favor that you protect us and keep us, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, from all evil. Lord, evil that's coming out of this abortion law that was passed, Lord God, we thank you for your word prevailing. 
We thank you, Lord, hallelujah, Lord God, that you have prevailed, Lord, with your word. Lord God, is murder. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. We thank you how you did it. We thank you, Lord God, because you're God and God all by yourself, Lord God. And we just want to thank you. Help us, oh, Father God, to live your word. Help us, oh, Lord, to be obedient to your word. Because you, Lord, have already written the law. Thou shalt not kill. You've already said it out of your mouth, Lord God. Thou shalt not kill. And, Lord, help us to be obedient to you and honor you, Father God. Help us to live our lives holy and be acceptable. Praise God. and come. Thank you, Lord, for this message today. In Jesus' name, Lord God, let the church say amen. Well, glory to God. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at somebody. Stand, stand and look at somebody and tell them I'm glad to be here. I'm glad I heard the word. Praise God. Amen. Refreshments are served.